feel, uh, and they are a, a great part of what goes on here in, in terms of the decision making. Tommy, I don't expect you to know necessarily the answer right now, but you've been out in Denver for a couple days and you have some insight that the rest of us don't in the Broncos. What is your gut feeling on John Elway? Will he or won't he return? Do you have a feel? I, I, I really don't know. You know, John and I rode around in a golf cart in Hawaii, and, and uh, the subject matter came up once uh, when John asked me how I felt when I retired, and I felt great when I retired. Uh, I think that it's a decision that is, is wholly his, uh, and I think that when he's ready to make it, he'll make it. Tommy, you're going to like this move. We're going to go to a coach that you're, you're pretty friendly with, the coach of the Jets. That's all right with you? That's all right with me. Yes, yeah, so with Billy Parcells, we're going to bring him in now. <laughs> Thanks to our sprint video conferencing. Let's uh, go out to Jets headquarters. Just a, uh, probably not a, that big a cab ride from here in downtown New York and join Bill Parcells with the Jets. And, and Bill, thanks for joining us this evening. You, you, you waited a long time here. What can you tell us about Randy Thomas and how you plug him in on your line? Well, uh, Chris, we think he's pretty athletic. He's 300 pounds. You know, he runs sub five flat. And you never know exactly where an offensive lineman is going to fit in. Uh, we, we know athletically he's got the abil ability. Um, last year we draft drafted Fabini. He was a little bit lacking in the athletic ability, but technically he was so good that he was able to play. So we need to find out where Randy is technically, and hopefully uh, uh, with the ability that he has, he'll be far enough along to help us. Look at it, your ball club overall. You, 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 you traded Glenn Foley away behind Vinny Testaverde after the year that Vinny had. Um, uh, your thought, I mean, you, you see Vinny just, just continuing to grow even off of last year, which was pretty darn good, frankly. Well, we're hopeful that he will. You know, he, he really played well for us, and uh, he was more than we could have hoped for, really, getting a player like that in June. Uh, certainly was uh, probably the single biggest thing in the, in the improvement of our team. But... Uh, we're still looking at the quarterback situation, and, and uh, we may address that further as we go. How much tread on the tire is left in a guy that you signed and, and, and you know, a, a harder hitter as they came when he was in his prime with Denver? Steve Atwater, you also pick up Eric Green. You, you've got some more veterans, uh, but what does Atwater bring to you, and, and how much do you think he really can contribute the next year or two? Well, you know, Chris, when I looked at the end of the season and where we finished, I knew without our first-round draft pick that we were going to have to do quite a bit in free agency if we are going to try and improve our team. The first thing we wanted to do was, was get a punter, and we think we got a real good punter in Tom Tupa. Then we thought we needed some players that would bring something similar to our team that Brian Cox brought last year. And we think Steve is that kind of player. He's a, a, a dynamic guy, and he's a guy that, that knows how to win, has been on a winning team, and uh, done, done that successfully for, for quite some time now. And the more of those guys that we can get around our young players, uh, the the quicker we think we'll have a chance to go. And, and that's basically why we did it. With Eric Green, we were talking to him prior to Kyle Brady's exodus to Jacksonville. So he was a player that we thought that we'd be interested in, regardless of whether we had retained Brady or not. So these guys have proven to be good players at one point in time in their career or another. So we're just hoping there's enough left to, to get through a couple years for us. Hey, Bill, the final penance has been paid. Your first-round pick is paid up to the Patriots. You're off the hook now, finally. Well, yeah, that's right. It's been a very difficult situation. Uh, we've tried to go over some multiple draft picks the first couple of years. We have seven additional picks this year. You know, if we could get half of those guys right, I'd be happy. How much longer do you want to do this to coach? Not to build a football team, but to coach on the field. Do you have a, do you have a plan, or is it going to be a gut feeling no. like so many things? No, I just, you know, I, I'm feeling pretty good right now. I wasn't feeling so good when the season was over, and I think that had a little uh, to do with the way it ended. But, uh, you know, I, I'm back doing things uh, now, and I, and I look forward to this year, and then we'll see what happens. Well, it was an exciting year, that's for sure, and you're bringing in guys that know how and want to win and continued success uh, with the Jets. Thanks, Bill. Okay, Chris. Bill Parcells. Yeah, they're done. They're off the hook now. No more no more picks to the Patriots. And, you know, they led at halftime at Denver in the championship game. They were that close to getting to the Super Bowl. When we return, we will wrap up everything in the second round and get you started in the third round. Here's a look 
and we'll go back about it uh, when we return here to New York. Four yard, oh, his first ice boats had a lot of speed, but not a whole lot of control. Yeah, with the blades set narrow, he couldn't steer around the ice fishing holes. Oh, geez, learn the hard way. Wider is better. With its speed-sensitive steering technology, the White Track Grand Prix gives you precise cornering and control, even at a good clip. You betcha, better air, better. Wider is better. The White Track Grand Prix by Pontiac. Is this a smart investment? Janice crunched all the numbers. They add up if the development opens on time. So every two weeks, Janice comes out here. Every two weeks, Janice sees how it's really going. Every two weeks, it's right on schedule. So Janice invests. The doors open on time, and Janice got in on the ground floor. Looking to build your portfolio? Get there. Janice Mutual Funds. Korean Nolan Ryan. Now, I want to be the Korean Big Mac. here and of course the whole draft began with Cleveland selecting Tim Couch and then at the top of the second round they picked Kevin Johnson wide receiver at Syracuse Raheem Abdullah we discussed middle second round they've just selected a, a, a defensive back in the third round Mel Dalen McCutcheon again he's a guy that looks like fell 15 or 20 spots Cleveland has to be elated that he was there for. Should be, you know, he was in the spotlight all four years at USC in the Pac-10 started 39 games in a row here against Arizona State you see him in coverage smooth fluid impressive array of cover skills the only problem is size five eight and a half 180 pounds so with a steady diet of big wideouts you have to wonder how he'll hold up but I think when you look at his versatility 25 24 yard average per kickoff return the fact that he has some running back skills so this kid's athletic it was talked about making him an offensive player at USC early on kind of reminds me of Ray Mick maybe a number two corner maybe a nickel back but I think with his versatility as a kickoff return man and the fact he's so experienced and such a good cover man you can protect him maybe like a Ray Mickens with the Jets maybe eventually pushes his way into the starting lineup well Joe well I'm just saying you know you've got Corey Fuller and Antonio Langham mm -hmm. What happens is that means you got two good veterans. Again, we're, what we're seeing here is we're seeing football teams getting players for some depth. They don't have to come in and play right away. And I think you alluded to a very good point there with Ray Mickens. Here's a guy who has a chance, like a Ray Mickens, to come in, feel your way in, understand the game, then go out and be able to contribute. Uh, you also have to consider always the three-corner scenario. You've got to have people on the field. You've got to have guys who, you've got to have a defense that can field three corners. You can't just have two of them out there. Well, there's a man that uh, has a pretty good perspective on what this draft and what drafts are all about and certainly has a great perspective on what the situation in Cleveland is all about. Not only this situation, because he helped us with the expansion draft, but he made his mark as head coach earlier with the Cleveland Browns. Marty Schottenheimer is with us on our crew here in New York. He's with our Mike Tarico. Guys? Chris, we've wrestled Marty away from radio. Uh, what's this day been like for you on a personal level? Mike, this is exciting as can be. You have an opportunity to be involved in all of this uh, thrilling uh, goings on here. You don't get in a situation where you have much anxiety. You kind of sit back and know any mistakes you make, they can be overlooked. It's not like taking a bad draft choice. <laughs> Thanks. All of our mistakes are overlooked. We, we take more comfort in that. Well, let's talk about Cleveland. We spent a lot of time there talking with Chris Palmer and Dwight Clark and Carmen Policy at the expansion draft. How do you like the way they've plotted their first four college draft picks? I think they've done an excellent job. Very simply, they've made a statement. Tim Couch is a franchise quarterback, Mike. He's a guy that can take us to the promised land. 
Then, of course, they take the wide receiver from your alma mater, uh, Johnson, a guy who has tremendous speed. I found out a little bit about him. I think he's an excellent choice. Then, of course, they've got a linebacker that they...